If AI refactoring is giving you cleaner code that's harder to change later, you're not imagining it. It's not a tooling problem. Most teams change the structure of code without understanding what actually wants to change in the domain. This is how legacy code is born. In this video, I'll show you the missing steps that prevent this from happening. So let's dive in. Hello world, I'm David Scott Bernstein and welcome to The Passionate Programmer. Here's what I see everywhere right now. Smart developers are using AI to refactor faster than ever. The code looks cleaner, the diffs look good and tests pass, and yet six weeks later, simple changes start breaking things. This is not because AI is bad, and it's not because developers don't know what they're doing. It's because refactoring without understanding forces is like rearranging the furniture in a house to solve a cracked foundation. Let me show you the most common prompt I see. Refactor this pricing function to be cleaner and more readable. This is what I get. It looks good. Functions are smaller, names are better, but watch closely. These rules still change for different reasons, but they're coupled together. We didn't actually fix the problem. We made it harder to see. This is the key shift. Stop asking AI for better code and start asking it to help you see the problem more clearly. Senior design doesn't start with structure. It starts with understanding what wants to change and why. Instead, we use AI to first find the forces. Think of forces like physics. Why does this code want to change? When we understand that, we understand how to design for change. Watch this. Analyze this pricing function. What varies here and why does each variation exist? Group variations by the reason to change. Now look carefully. Quarterly customer program and monthly temporal promotions. These aren't just different rules. They live in different clocks. That's a force. Given variations with independent reasons to change, what structure allows new rules to be added without modifying existing ones? If you answered the strategy pattern, then you are correct. But notice what happened. I didn't choose strategy arbitrarily. The forces demanded it. Now this matters. This is not always the right move. We don't want to replace all conditionals with strategies because it would be far too much work. We only want to use the strategy pattern when we want extensibility. If the rules are stable and we have just like two simple cases that we're never going to do any more with, then an if-else statement is just fine. So we don't want to say that we should always use a strategy because, well, there are many times when we don't want to use a strategy. It's just when we want extensibility, when we want interchangeability for a behavior. And it's a little unnerving because when I started out as a developer, one of the key things was like, have a plan, really understand, because it's so easy to get lost in the weeds. Yet I advocate for doing development sort of on the fly. This is not shoot from the hip. This is have a series of practices tried and true that I've tested over decades that work over and over again and use them to mitigate the fear of not doing enough. So I do just enough to be able to do more later without paying a huge price. That's the key. And even though I can now do in 30 seconds what used to take me three hours with Claude, uh, it's still important because, you know, I don't want to just make messes. I want to make sure that my code is resilient and robust and, and we can build on it. Design is all about judgment, not pattern application. Here's the difference. Marketing wants a new promotion. I add one file. I touch nothing else. That's good. This is not refactoring. This is resilience. And yes, there are costs. For example, there's more files. There's more indirection. And that causes a greater cognitive load. So we really have to understand what the trade-offs are and when they're worth it. That's what being a senior developer is all about. 
When developers come to my classes, I, one of the first things I say is, next week, when you get back to your office, you might not do anything differently than you've done before, but you will know what the trade-offs are. And that, I think, is critically important. Understanding what the trade-offs are gives us better insight to make better decisions. So what are the downsides of using a strategy? More, more lines of code. Uh, when I was doing Java, an if-else statement, which is three, four lines of code, could turn into about 30 lines of code for a minimal strategy pattern. That's a lot more typing. Is it worth it? And again, it depends. If I have a lot of new variations that I'm adding to that strategy, it's super easy to do and it's super testable. So yes, but if I'm not adding new variations, then it's a total waste of time to use a strategy instead of an if-else statement or a switch statement. So it really is context dependent. And that's why senior developers use the phrase, it depends all the time, because it really does. Understanding what these things depend on, <laughs> that's what being a senior developer is about. Architecture is always about trade-offs. Design is always about trade-offs. The question is whether you're paying interest now or paying interest later. This solves today's problem, but it creates a new question. How do you let non-developers add rules safely? <laughs> That's exactly what we tackle in the next video. So I'll see you there. And until then, happy coding.